organic waste from Holbeck, a medium-sized Danish town and its surrounding regions. Tons of peel, coffee beans and gravy. Throughout Denmark, not less than 700,000 tons of biologically degradable refuse each year. In Europe, a total of 80 million tons of this type of refuse each year. There are three ways of getting rid of it. There's the dump, which is used in many places around Europe, a bad solution because energy is lost and the environment adversely affected. You can burn it, that's not the best solution either because organic waste contains a lot of water, which doesn't burn all that well. And burning gives waste products in the form of slag and gases which have to be deposited. Then there's the solution that's best for both the environment and energy. Composting and biogassing the refuse in order to get tons of good, well-nourished earth. That requires just three things, using the biology that our Lord has provided us with. Using a simple but robust technology and not complicating the process of sorting and collecting the refuse. That's something Holbeck doesn't do. We've gone along with a morning refuse shift to see how it works. Here people sort their refuse into two types, an organic one and an incinerating one. It doesn't matter what sort of bags people use in the kitchen. Because the refuse is divided into different containers and it's neither more expensive nor more difficult to collect the sorted refuse even though there are two containers. It's not difficult, one container on one side of the truck and the other on the other side. At the same time, the system doesn't require waste to be delivered by compression vehicles or container vehicles. The organic refuse arrives at Biovext, which is run by the Solum Group. Each year, the system receives thousands of tons of refuse from a long list of councils in Western Zealand. Here, it's unloaded in a reception hall. First of all, the refuse is moved into a normal mixer and the bags are twisted open. If the refuse isn't properly sorted, the bags are sorted and larger non-organic materials sieved out. This is only a rough sorting of the material as plastic bags, knives or other even larger objects can't stop the system or its biological processes. It's important to mix structural material into the refuse before it's treated as otherwise the refuse will just compact and liquids won't be able to run off. The structural material also ensures that the mass gets enough air during composting. Stabilization takes place using, among other things, branch refuse, which also goes through the biological process. Mixing is carried out in the same type of mixer that opens the bags. The refuse mass is now ready to be treated. This takes place in a so-called process module, which in effect is a simple cement hall. The module is water and gas tight so that biology can do its bit without interruption in a controlled and thus optimal atmosphere. The nutrient-rich liquids are continually pumped over into a liquid manure tank in which methane-producing bacteria transform the percolate into biogas. Biogas that's then made into electricity and heat. The energy is passed directly into the Western Zealand grid. When the biogas process has ended, the refuse is composted, after which the dried, composted mass is driven out into the open air. Now the last plastic bags are sorted away and sent for incineration. The nutrient-rich compost is used for earth enrichment, predominantly in agriculture. No poisonous gases or slag here, only fine earth containing fertilizer, humus and masses of microlife. But what does it all cost? The CEO, Christian Rindbull, explains. 
anlæg i den her størrelse, som kan modtage... A system like this can handle 25,000 tons of organic waste each year. Acquisition costs are about 35 million kroner. Much cheaper and much more efficient than other known systems. ...cirka det samme per ton for at aflevere det på et anlæg som vores, som de betaler, når de afleverer til et forbrændingsanlæg. The energy accounting is pretty impressive too. Out of 25,000 tons of organic waste, enough energy is produced to cover the annual requirement of 3,000 families, heat that equals 1.5 million liters of oil, plus 22,500 tons of nutrient-rich earth. If the same amount of refuse had been incinerated, less energy would have come out of it, and instead of earth, we'd have had to deposit slag and gas. So what's the most sensible thing to do? Burn organic waste? or use the Lord's biology.